Hey guys, what is up? John here from Fly8MikeAlpha.com. Back in the airplane today to answer a very important question. What exactly happens when one of your main gear tire blow out on landing or you land with a flat tire? I got a good feeling that our left main gear tire is about to blow out. All right, so the name of the game here is we're going to accelerate this airplane up to 65 miles per hour ground speed. We are going to run over a spike strip with our left main gear tire. Our left main gear tire will presumably deflate and blow out, rapidly pulling the airplane to the left, and we're going to find out just how much does that pull the aircraft to the left. What do we have to do to maintain directional control? We'll be watching our happy feet, see what happens here. Let's go ahead and accelerate the airplane up to touchdown or landing speed. Well, there goes our left main gear. Not a whole heck of a lot. If I let go of the airplane, well, it does pretty well so far. And if I go ahead and try to apply some brakes, well, yes, we are going off the left side of the runway now, and it's a little bit harder to control, and uh-oh, here we go. Well, not as bad as I really thought it would be. Pretty easy to control, especially if you manage those brakes appropriately, get the power out of there. Perhaps at this point you might want to start doing things like pulling the mixture, turning off your mags, trying to secure the airplane as quickly as possible, assuming that you have a prop strike. Biggest thing here is maintain directional control of the airplane. Don't freak out, relax. It's not going to be the end of the world as long as you don't freak out, or at least it's always going to be a better outcome if you don't freak out. All right, so this is the aftermath, right? This is what you're left with if you land with a flat main gear tire or it blows out on landing, maybe it blew out on takeoff, whatever the circumstance might be. Perhaps you land with the brakes on, tire pressure's a little bit low, it turns on the rim, it slices the valve stem, the air bleeds out as you're taxing, whatever it is, the airplane's obviously going to want to turn. It's difficult to taxi. Your only job, your only job at this point is to safely get the airplane stopped. Now, a lot of airplanes, believe it or not, have a checklist for what to do for a flat main gear tire or a flat nose gear tire. Always found that hilarious because how am I gonna know I have a flat nose gear tire until I actually land? Like, why would I use that checklist in flight before landing? So the takeaway from that is, well, you should probably be familiar with the checklist before you go flying so that if it does happen to you, you can instantly think of what to do because you memorize the checklist rather than be pulling out a piece of paper going, well, this is really bouncing around a lot and pulling hard to the left. What should I do now, Jim? It's a good thing to know before you get into the airplane. Look at your POH, look at your checklist, find out if there's any guidance there. If not, well then common sense applies, right? Possibly opposite braking, just enough to maintain directional control to keep the airplane from going off the runway. It's okay to kind of go with it because we don't want to stress things so badly that we start breaking off main gear, having prop strikes and make the situation worse. But just letting the airplane roll out, possibly applying some opposite rudder and perhaps some opposite brake seems to be enough. Again, with taking some weight off that wing, if at all possible, using some aileron, that is typically enough to have a positive outcome like this is. The airplane's pretty tough. It's not going to really collapse the main gear unless you really do something dumb or you land excessively fast or some other weird scenario it happens to you, you go off in the grass and there's a lot of drag whatever it is this actually taxis pretty well in the grass with a flat tire compared to on pavement either way your only job is to bring the airplane to a stop then pull out your securing checklist your shutdown checklist shut down the aircraft then get out if you're at a towered airport let the tower know you're safe but you need some assistance do not try to move the airplane yourself because You've done your job. You're a pilot, right? You did everything you were supposed to do. You flew the airplane, you landed safely, you had a bad issue, but you had a positive outcome. The airplane's safe. It looks like this. Nothing's broken, really, other than the tire. Maybe the rim's a little damaged. But from now on, if you fire this up and you try to taxi it somewhere, you own it. And you're also operating under your pilot certificate for that reason. So, because you're ending your flight still, I don't recommend doing that. Bring it to a stop shut it down, get out, let it be somebody else's problem. Call the maintenance shop, call whoever, let them put a dolly under it, let them come out and change the tire, bring it back to the hangar, let them take care of it for you. That's what insurance and all that stuff is for. Don't try to be a hero and taxi this thing back and wind up doing way more damage to the aircraft than needed to be done. So call somebody else to shut it down and walk away. That is it. That is it for this video. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Don't try to be a hero. 
This has happened to me with nose gear tires before. This has never happened to me in real life with a main gear tire. Uh, it's happened taxing around, but never actually on landing or takeoff. Obviously not the end of the world. As long as you stay calm, that is key, right? Don't make the situation worse. Just stay calm, think through what you need to do. You'll probably have a pretty positive outcome, or at least it's going to be a more positive outcome if you're calm and relaxed than it would be if you were freaking out, jamming on brakes and over controlling the crap out of the airplane. So that's it for this one, guys. If you have any questions, comments are placed down below for you for your convenience. This is all part of that awesome what is inside of an airplane slash let's destroy an airplane video series. And if you guys want to watch more of this, check it out on flyitmikealpha.com. We've got a lot more videos of what's inside these wings, how does the engine work. Also, when we drain all the oil out of this engine and see how long it runs for, that is coming here to YouTube and flyitmikealpha.com. Of course, if you guys like this video, well, there's a lot more like these here on YouTube and way more on flyitmikealpha.com as we complete our what is inside of an airplane slash let's destroy an airplane video series as we explain to you what is inside of all these parts and pieces. How does the airplane look? How is it put together? And next video is going to be what happens when we drain all the oil out of the engine and then fire it up and run it. How long will that engine actually run for with no oil? You'll find out in the next video. If you guys cannot fly every day, then fly at mikealpha.com. We'll see y'all in the next one. Pushing? Yeah. Pushing.